Greetings everyone, my name is Wounded Wells and welcome to another Guild Wars 2 video. Today, I'm going to be showing you one of the elite specializations called the Spellbreaker. The Spellbreaker is for the warrior, which allows them to wield two daggers. Um, right now, during the Path of Fire demo, which al well, they are allowing us to do PvP... Uh, play PvP with the uh, Elite Specializations. So I'm going to go through each of the skills and kind of give you a little bit of info on what they do. Um, so for the, you know, your basic one is your Precious Cut, uh, Precise Cut, um, Strike Your Foe, this deals increased da critical damage, and uh, you have a, your second one is your Focus Slash, which, uh, they, they're both doing just all they're doing is dealing uh, precise just uh, per critical damage and I believe all this is is just a ba simple basic attack your second one is your aura slicer leap it's your leap and inflicts a slow on them uh, which will last about uh, it has like a 300 percent like a 300 range uh, slow will last about clo looks like close to two minutes um, and I have to say the I like the animation on some of these because you could if you take a look closely it looks like you're cutting into a thin air and you're uh, generating sparks or leaves and then your third skill is your disrupting blade. It inflicts days on your opponent. If your target is using a skill, this skill stuns and then deals increased damage. I think this will be effective, especially in PvP, because you are essentially not only disrupting your opponent from using their skills, but you're also dealing extra damage each time you do it, making your three your more viable option when you're doing this. Uh, when you're playing as the Spellbreaker. Let's see. Ooh, that looks cool. But, you know, the cooldown on it, it's 11 seconds, so it's kind of, you kind of want to probably play some of these conservatively. But your your 2 has a 5, five uh, second cooldown. It do, will deal 159 damage. That's pretty, that's pretty decent. Um, damage is increased by 50%. Your days last like a fourth of a second. And your the stun will last a uh, 1.5 seconds. Um, then you have your Westreal's Rune. You strike your foe, deal more damage to foes not using skills. So if you're, you're you have a enemy that's just either running, not really paying it, either not paying attention or just not using their skills. Another, well, also a combo would be when they're stunned because they're obviously not using their skills. Uh, this will deal a lot of damage. So it seems like the spellbreaker is designed for uh, dealing extra damage, just shutting down your opponent and dealing extra damage. Now, what I wanted to share before I started this was actually all this, all this information is biased towards PvP, or not biased, but geared towards PvP. If you're playing PvE, obviously you're going to do different builds and you're going to try different skills. Some of this won't be as important when you're doing PvE, but you know if you're into PvP, like I am, I mean I do both PvE and PvP, but I, I really like to play PvP when ranked, rank, ranked seasons are up. Um, I kind of find this information pretty interesting, especially when uh, Path of Fire is coming out relatively soon. And then your five uh, what is uh, Blade Storm. Unleash a fury of attacks that deals oh, that deals uh, damages that damages foes and reflects projectiles coming from the front. So pretty much your anti. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty cool. But I don't like the 19 the 19 second cooldown on that. That 
feels like I mean I can understand if it was like a 10 second maybe 15 second but for it because it's a it's all it is is a fury a flurry attack uh, um, a burst attack um, it could deal a max of 1,800 uh, damage uh, it gives you a 33% well, movement speed increase inflicts vulnerability uh, and condition damage to your opponent it can target up to five people and it reflects and it ref reflects projectiles so it's pretty much anti anti uh, ranger and anyone that uses ranged weapons now I'm going to be looking to some of the utility skills uh, your natural healing you lose boons and conditions and then you heal yourself which is good we it can heal up to uh, 11k almost 12k get guarantee you might uh, 150 power and 150 condition damage. It can remove up to seven in conditions and boons. Um, and then the second one is your sight beyond sight. Uh, meditation. Oh, your uh, meditation. Uh, it reveals uh, nearby foes. Uh, yeah, it reveals nearby foes, and it remove. Um, and make your next uh, it will make your next attack do a critical and remove boons. This is pretty good, especially when you are uh, you're playing against necros, mesmers, or anyone that does conditions. Um, now the uh, the amount you could probably the amount of conditions you could probably remove probably varies, but it. Sounds like you like say if you're playing against a necro that blinds, a ranger that blinds or burns, you can remove that condition pretty easily. Uh, probably not as effective as a guardian that can cleanse or any skill that can cleanse. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's the uh, uh, firebrand guardian, uh, the the new guardian elite specialization. These are pretty. These are pretty interesting elite specializations especially since uh, uh, we com we're comparing them to uh, Heart of Thorns the ones from Heart of Thorns are nothing compared to these ones these ones are improved and better because the ones in Heart of Thorns feel like they have been rushed uh, they y y I, I kind of like the story involved in the game and it feels like some of those elite specializations, unless you paid attention to, like, some of them I can understand because you have the living story and you can kind of see how the elite specializations from Heart of Thorns can fit in and how they um, kind of like their origin because uh, some of the characters, well, from the uh, living story in season three pick up those weapons and then they start using them for those classes and then they develop skills for them. So I can understand, but a lot of those skills, or a lot of those elite specializations, they don't make sense. Or they just aren't, well, like, they, they're not viable in some aspects of the game, like PvP. The Scrapper... I don't. I don't necessarily. I mean, I like because my war, my my engineer is a scrapper, but I prefer him in PvP because those those uh, gyroids are really good. But um, oh, whoops. Uh, other than that, uh, you, you got some very uh, basic. Let's see. The other ones are your illuminating an intimate threat. It's a meditation. Taught your uh, your nearby foes gain adrenaline for each foe hit. Um, involuntary attack foes reflect incoming damage back to its source. Um, get, grants you three stacks of adrenaline, especially when the warrior always does. Uh, that's their special skills is to use adrenaline. Um, then you got featherfoot graze gain a, is uh, that's essentially your speed boost. Um, and then break enchantments, strike foes, and you remove their boons, deal more damage to those, and they lose a boon. To those foes that lose a boon, that's pretty good when you're in conjunction. Actually, I'm going to probably equip that 
because I'm going to hop into a PvP match here soon. Um, I, I I think the, that will be more viable and probably seen more in PvP because it uh, this elite skill or this utility skill I think will stack well with the spellbreaker's ability to just stun, stop, and deal a bunch of damage to people that are not that you're canceling their abilities. Now, um, I don't know how well it works with the regular with the regular skills, so I'm gonna play play. I'm gonna play with that a bit. But let's take a look at some of the. Uh, oh, whoops. Yes, the uh, the spellbreakers uh, oh, trait. Sorry. So their base. The first one is full counter. Absorb the next attack against you and counterattack all foes around you. Foes struck by their by the counterattack are interrupted. So again, we are focusing on neutralizing your opponent from dealing uh, from doing anything. Granted, it probably won't be too effective, especially with how long these effects last. But I can, I can see uh, Spellbreaker being viable in PvP, just because of just the, these card counters. Sorry, I'm I'm a little tongue-tied at the moment. And then you go into Pure Strike. Well, I'm going to go through the, the rows here, but uh, the first one is Pure Strike. Deal increased critical damage. This is bonus is doubled against Boonless Foes, especially when you have Break Enchantment. You strip your opponent of bone, Boons, you can deal critical damage. And then that, that critical damage is increased by 7%. Well, that's probably not including... Uh, that's probably not including... Uh, the amount of critical damage that your other skills get give and then you know the boonless crit for each time your opponent doesn't have a boon on them it increases it by 14 percent which is pretty good you don't I I wouldn't say I haven't seen more but I think for for, for what we might see for warrior because warriors are uh, some warriors are more uh, tanks that I've seen in PvP or support. This is a pr pretty good like DPS. This is like a new, a new, a new. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to find the words here. A new front, not frontier, but a new meta maybe for warrior dealing a DPS warrior. And then uh, the next one down the line is Guard Counter. Gain protection after a successful full counter. And then that will... <coughs> for 30 seconds, that will reduce 33% in, uh, incoming damage. And with injunction to that, 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 that would uh, increase your survivability, especially in uh, PvP. Though, granted, probably on more so for 1v1... Not necessarily with <coughs> more with uh, more than one, namely Zergs. And then the third one down the line is No Escape. Dazes and stuns inflict immobilize for one second. So pretty much you, that that locks down their escapes, which is pretty good if you especially want to. Advi um, damn it! If you want to. Uh, just burst down to foe. And then the next thing going across the board is Dispelling Force. Dazes, stuns, pulls, knockdowns, knockbacks, and launches remove boons. So, I'm not sure if that just applies to you or your allies. So, like, say if uh, someone does a knockback, a stun, or just any of these uh, uh, conditioned abilities... Um, if if it affects them and it remove and it goes uh, if it's uh, aggro wise or aura wise, but it it doesn't say that, so I'm gonna assume this is just like for you. So if you do a bunch of knockdowns 
knockbacks, uh, pulls, stuns, and all that stuff. You, you, that's another way to remove the boons and to trigger all your other abilities. Um, then you got going down the next row is loss aversion. Removing boons from a foe deals damage and gives you adrenaline. So that that's a good way to fill that. Remove additional boons and deals a bunch of damage. I can see that I mean, right now, going down this, it looks like this is already a good PvP build. I'd have to look at these, but if you're for Spellbreaker-wise, this is good. And probably maybe with conjunction of these, but I'm going to mostly focus on the Spellbreaker uh, attributes. And then I'm going to uh, show footage of my PvP battles. Okay, so Lost Aversion. Then the next one is Slow Counter. Full counter applies cripple and slow. So that's a good way to just es prevent them from escaping. And, oh, skills and actions are slower. That that definitely is a, um, I can see this for just, you want to, um, you want to uh, guarantee kills. <coughs> and preventing people from escaping. Now you got the third one and last one in this row is Sun and Moon style. Gain bonuses for each dagger you equip. Main hand interrupts gains quickness. Only occurs once per interval. Offhand heal for a percent of your outgoing critical damage. That's pretty good. I mean, I don't think this is a strong skill. I mean, PvP aspect wise, I, I'm I. It, all it does is uh, critical damage to healing. I mean, I can. If I'm reading this right, it sounds like this is anti heal. Which, 7% ain't much. But, you know, if you're, if you're good at bursting them down, then yes, that is good. That is good. And then maybe a quickness, skills, and actions are faster. So that's probably uh, just a quicker way to adding quickness to you will kill them faster <coughs> sorry okay attackers insight is your next middle gain insight when disabling foes or removing boons full counter refreshes all burst skills on hit disables includes stun days knockback pull knockdown sink float launch taunt and fear so it applies it for applies that for 15 seconds and adds the following traits 60 to ferocity and 60 to power with a, a maximum of five stacks and all that I see that will do is increase your critical and your damage the next and final row is enchantment collapse remove a boon from a foe cause all nearby foes to lose additional boons so this is essentially mo um, <clears throat> Excuse me. This is essentially bo uh, buff removal on a larger scale. Uh, max number of targets is five with a two. You know, I would say 240 radius. Um, I, I'm not too sure on how big that is relatively in game, but uh, it's it's pr that, that's pretty good. Uh, like it's like I said, it still goes with the lore of the spellbreaker, just removing and just countering the opponent and stopping them from doing anything really. Next up is the revenge counter. Full counter deals an additional damage and grants resistance. Copy conditions on yourself to targets you hit with full counter. So this is another buff towards your full counter. Uh, resistance conditions currently on you are ineffective, stacks durations, damage increased by 20%, and conditions copied is 5. So I think, from what I'm understanding, is it will add conditions to you and it copies it to your foes that you hit with full counter. And then, Me Mega Bane Tether. Tether yourself to your target. If you move beyond the range threshold, pull them to you. Grant might and reveal your target. Reveals your target every second. So that's a 600 threshold. Um, 
90 power and condition damage. Uh, reveals, um, you obviously you can't stun for 3 seconds. Uh, pulls 3 for, um, pull range is 600. It lasts for 8 seconds. And, yep, that's about it for that. Um, and then the adrenaline is uh, strike your target and remove a boon. Boon removal and then full counter. Oh, the, the full counter is uh, is an active activate. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna end this portion right now and I'm gonna start up with some actual PvP. Um, I'm going to use a uh, program to record over that uh, as I play just because I'm going to watch over it, record it, uh, record audio, and just do commentary on that. That way it's a little bit more fun and I can get my speed, my, my, uh, my dialogue together. So thank you guys again for watching and be right back in a, in a GIF.